I'm a lonely boy. Oh, I don't have love. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, today we're talking CO2 tanks or off-road. If you off-road and you've seen one of these, you've probably been really jealous and wanted to get one but didn't know enough about them. This right here is a power tank that we got at the off-road show a couple weeks ago and they're pretty pricey. They run anywhere between $500 to as high as $700 for a kit with a tank, hose, and regular and everything that you need in order to use one of these. Now in this video, we're going to go over a couple items. We're gonna go over how to fill these up. There's a couple things you need to know there. The difference in using one of these, how quick they are. We're gonna put them side by side with our regular compressor. We're gonna go over the basics of safety tips on how to use this to use it safely. And you know, there's a process to charge it and there's a process to uh, put it away as well. And then finally, we're gonna show you guys a DIY option to basically build your own for less than half. Yeah, you heard that right, for less than half. Basically the same power tank setup. So first, let's go get this thing filled up. Now, filling up a CO2 tank is not as easy as you would think. You can't just go online and search for CO2, right? It just doesn't work that way. The best thing to do is find a local welding shop. You know, in my area, I had Action Gas or Air Gas. Both of them were options that we could have used. But make sure you call them ahead of time. Not everybody refills CO2 tanks. Some places only do exchanges. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to exchange my nice powder, powder coat tank for a tank that's been abused at one of these places. Now around me, like I said, we have air gas and we had action gas. I called around. It's none of our my local air gas uh, shops do refills. They only do exchanges. Luckily, my uh, local action gas welding shop did do refills, and I'm gonna show you guys the whole process right here. Now, when you first show up, make sure you read the windows of the place you're going to. A lot of these places do not want you to take these inside into the showroom, so be very careful. These are high pressure vessels. So they want you to actually leave them outside or leave them in your vehicle until you're ready to bring them in and actually charge them. Once you actually get to charging them, the process takes about five minutes. It's actually relatively quick. Um, and some shops will actually let you watch as it's being done, which is kind of cool. So that regulator piece comes off. So for next time I bring it in, it's probably easier if I just take that off ahead of time, right? Yeah, okay. you can do that for me. It's not a big deal. And I think this is the first time it's been filled. Would you mind putting the actual empty weight? Once you guys have it? Yeah. So what we do now is we go and vent it because the way CO2 is filled is by weight. Mm -hmm. So if you don't start with a tear bottle, you don't know exactly how much you're putting in. So this one was completely empty. So we know that it's at its tear weight. So, airway 7.8 with everything else on it. Not the little regulator and guard part. Awesome. So what we do now is we attach the fill hose to it. Make sure it's open. It's kind of like a fill in a propane tank, right? Yeah. This is like filling any other gas we have in here. Make sure it's tear. It's a 10 pound tank, so we're putting 10 pounds of CO2 in here. Open it up all the way. Just let the scale do its magic. Once it gets around 7 pounds, it's going to start having a problem doing itself. So That's where that little guy comes in? A little vacuum pump right here. Well, not vacuum pump, but pump. Well, um, it uses CO2 from a non-siphon tank over here mm -hmm. to help the uh, the liquid CO2 get pushed into the bottle. Close the fill valve. 
There's the tank valve. Turn it both snug. Since you have your, your regulator, you don't need to cap it. Let's back off. These things make a huge difference off road too. It goes from 20 minute fill ups to less than five minutes for all four tires. Yeah, I bet that. I, I believe that for sure. Just snug it up a tiny bit so you don't screw it up. Don't want it too tight, especially since your valve's aluminum. So I think that should be okay. All good. Just like that, it's all ready to go. Awesome, thank you, man. You're welcome. As far as fill up, it cost us around just over $18 to fill this up. And this is a 10 pound tank right here. So you do the math, it ends up being close to $2 a pound to fill one of these bad boys up. So make sure you consider that too when you, could, when you decide to go with the power tank. There is a cost associated with them. All right, to show you guys the difference, we're gonna do... <laughs> We're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of the power tank against the regular compressor. And I think you guys know who's gonna win. And we're actually gonna hobble him a little bit by making him have to get in the back of the truck, get the lock off, and Christian and I are gonna actually set it up and get it hooked up on the truck and everything. I'm going down. No, you're going down. All right, so with that, ready, <laughs> set, <laughs> go. <laughs> God, you little, no, no. I got it. No. I got it. <laughs> no, no, this is my job. All right, all right. So compressor's connected in first. Uh -uh. Make sure you open it up right. Remember, we're going to 40. So we started off at about 20 PSI on both tires, and we're going up to 40, which is what we normally run. But I know some of you guys are thinking that's a little high, but the Toyo RTs look deflated at 38, 38 PSI. So we go a little bit higher just so that they look a little bit more pumped up and it helps with the fuel economy. <laughs> Make sure you guys are checking. We're going to 40. Oh. 36. Whoa. What are you at? He's at 36. What are you at? 30. Hey, I'm making fair. I'll put it back in the car. <laughs> I need your uh, valve though. Same fair. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, just hitting 34. Here you go, bud, so you get a more accurate reading. You still going? Yes, I'm slow. What wow, are you at? 37. Oh my god, that's slow. I'm gonna go cook me some dinner. All right. See you guys in the field. Bye. Should be like 12. We're, we're waiting for the tree to produce the oxygen so we can fill up the tire. Waiting for the drill to start. Dad, 39? Be, Dad, you should be like 12 hours late, Dad. Let's see. 39? Ah! There you go. I win! Come on, Christian. <laughs> Come on. So what do you guys think? Which one would you rather use? I think American Mouse will beat all you guys. Yeah, the CO2 tank made a huge difference and it's way quicker. I call BS. I had a handicap too. I can never get the lock in. And? You guys I should have just thrown my keys and have them search for it see if I could have won. Just jealous.
For this one, I got my son is gonna help us out, show you guys how to properly use these. There is this process in order to use these correctly, both how to charge it and how to discharge it. Now you'll notice you're gonna have two valves. You're gonna have your main valve to open up the tank to let the CO2 out, and then you have your regulator valve up here. Both of them play a different role. So let's go ahead and get this connected, and then we're gonna show you what to do. Okay, now before you start, before you charge the system, you wanna hook it up first. So let's go ahead and hook it up. Hook up your side. Now you have two regulators right here and both of them play a different role. The top regulator is for the pressure in the tank. The bottom regulator is gonna tell you the pressure coming out into your hose. Um, ideally, you don't wanna exceed 150 PSI because most of your accessories won't do that. So we're gonna charge up the tank and open it up. Here we go. And you'll see the pressure on the tank go up and then we're gonna go ahead and charge up our tool and you're gonna see the pressure go up. And you can actually fine tune your pressure to any between 100, you can even go as high as 150, depending on the tools or whatever you wanna run. You can go even faster if you wanted to, but for the most part, we left ours at about 150. Now, once you're done, it's not as simple as just disconnecting everything. You cannot just go in and disconnect everything. It just doesn't work that way. There's a couple things you have to do. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and close the tank. So make sure the tank is closed all the way. So now the tank is closed. Next thing we're gonna do is relieve all the CO2 and all the pressure in the lines and in the regulator. Make sure both gauges read zero before you close this and disconnect your accessories. If you do not do that, you run into a situation where you can't actually plug your accessories back in to properly drain the system and you won't be able to disconnect the hose here at the bottom. And that's it. That's how you properly charge and how you properly discharge your CO2 tank. As promised, I wanted to talk about ways that you can save half basically in doing a similar setup. Now, power tanks are great because you get a whole solution already ready to go and it comes with a lifetime warranty, which is great. The power tank guys have a really great warranty. So if you ever have any problems with this thing, they'll be able to fix it. That being said, this kit alone, which includes the tank, the hose, the fittings, and no regulator is $605. Yeah, it's pretty expensive. We got ours at the show and saved quite a bit of money on it, but they're pretty pricey. There is a way for you to build this setup for less than half, for less than $300. And I'm gonna show you how. Essentially, these are just basically CO2 tanks. Your typical CO2 tank you can find on Amazon for about $103, um, and that's shipped to your door. So you can get the tank alone for $103, but you're gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need later, one that's adjustable to 250 PSI. You're gonna need a hose. If you don't already have one, you wanna get a high pressure hose that can handle all the extra pressure. And you're gonna need your hose coupling fittings. Now I'm gonna put a link to all these in the description below. Basically your whole setup with a digital pressure gauge comes out to $265. So big, big difference, less than half of what these cost. You're not gonna get the warranty that comes with the power tank and you're gonna have to build the whole system yourself. You're also not gonna get this really fancy handle for it, but you'll be able to get a CO2 setup that'll let you fill up much quicker for half the cost. Credit to this actual solution goes to Daniel Cox. He's Off-Road Daniel on Instagram. He's the guy that actually put it together for us. You know, he's a construction guy, so he already recognized all these parts. He actually built and built his own power tank for far cheaper with very similar parts. Uh, and in fact, he ended up actually getting, going to power tank to get the actual holder for it because they don't make too many good holders for it aftermarket. So you will still end up going to power tank for the holders and any other accessories that you want on there to put your tank on your truck. One last note when it comes to CO2 tanks, when you figure out a spot to store this, it's okay to have it laying down or laying up however you want. When you actually use it, it either has to be upright or somewhere around just past 45 degrees. It, this is an absolute requirement because if this valve gets any of the CO2 in it, it can actually be ruined. The other thing too is usually these require a checkup about every five years or so. 
And every five years, basically what happens is they gotta take this valve off and they gotta stick a camera through there to make sure that there's no strikes fractures in here because this is a high pressure vessel. So keep that in mind every five years or so, that's the one thing you do have to worry about these. Most of the places that fill up may even ask you to find out when you initially got it so that they can they can do the checks because if it's, if it's uh, not checked out, they won't fill it up. All right guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We went over a couple items from how to fill it up, you know, in your local store, how to use it, the benefits of running it, how much quicker it is. We even went over the basic operation, right? Things you should know on how to use it so that you're using it correctly. And then lastly, an option for you guys to get it much cheaper. Big thank you to Off-Road Daniel for sharing his build list so that you guys can also build your own. And we'll see you guys on the next video, guys. Keep it dirty.